I gave myself 24 hours to make the most satisfying clicker game I could. Games like Adventure Capitalist and Factorio are satisfying, but I feel that there's a few tricks that we can explore to make them even more satisfying. So armed with just the Unity game engine, I set off to make the most satisfying clicker game that I could. The support at the moment has been insane, so if you do enjoy, please consider subscribing, it's 100% free, and I won't spam your subscription box. Now there's a lot of clicker games out there, and I mean a lot, so why do I think that I, a somewhat okay game developer, has a chance of creating the most satisfying clicker game of all time? Well, it's actually quite simple. Polish. My game is going to aim to break out of that harsh capitalist mindset and instead focus on basic gameplay with hard polish. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Alright, so as always, I booted up into a new Unity project and got straight to work. A lot of clicker games are based in a single scene, you have one camera angle and that's it. But in the ultimate bargy clicker game, we have the luxury of moving our camera around. The theme I wanted to go for for my game was a medieval iron factory, so I got to work on modelling an iron ingot, pulled it into Unity and gave it physics. I then set up a spawner so I could test how it interacted with other ingots in the scene. Yeah, that, that, that's probably a bit few too many. I felt at this point that I needed a core gameplay loop to work towards, so I wrote down some of the main features that I wanted. Firstly, we need some type of material to gather for our production line, in this case it will be iron, and we also need a way to mine this and show the user visually that this is happening. Secondly, we need to set up a conveyor network that links all stages of the production line together and can work with high speed physics objects. Thirdly, we need a furnace that can take in iron ore and spew our iron ingots back onto the production line. Fourth, we need a forge that accepts iron ingots as inputs and allows the user to craft items that they can sell for money at the market. And five, we need a way to show the items being sent to the market as well as the currency slash shop system. But before we get onto that, have you ever wanted to make games but the initial push of learning how to model, program and create music just seemed like a lot at once? This video's sponsor Core is a great way to learn these skills one by one and create games that actually look good with almost no effort. Core is a new free game creation platform that lets you build, publish and play games. If you're new to making games then Core is a great way to start, especially if you want to quickly set up a 3D multiplayer game. No coding is required and you can get started making games right away using thousands of free, high quality music, sound and art assets. But if you do want to dive deeper, Core has optional Lua scripting as well as the ability to create basic 3D models. As I'm writing this, there are over 20,000 user created games on the Core platform from first person shooters to RPGs. I hopped on to see if anyone had made any clicker games and sure enough, I was greeted with countless games that probably took a tenth of the time to make as my own. Core has partnered with Epic Games and will be launching in early access on April 15th, exclusively in the Epic Games store. Starting April 15th, Core is hosting the Special Player Tournaments. There will be four weekly player tournaments with a prize pool of $55,000 in cash. Participating in the games alone will result in this mount for free. Download Core for free in the Epic Games store at the link in the description. I got started on the iron ore mining feature first off by modelling some basic rocks in Blender. However, for some reason, after multiple iterations, I just couldn't get it to look right, so I opted to download some free rock models from online and clumped these rocks together and added some chunks of iron sticking out. And eventually, I had three basic iron ore nodes. I also wanted to try my hand at the conveyor, as I had no idea how I was going to approach it. I abused Newton's third law with these two lines of code and had a pretty stable conveyor up and running, so we can check that off the list uh, a little early I guess. A big focus for me with this game was UI. We have to make the act of pressing a button actually enjoyable. So I started out by creating some buttons of various colours and adding a little progress bar animation to them. It still wasn't too satisfying to click though, so I added a punch animation when you clicked, and then I proceeded to add a way to view the price of the button, as well as a shake animation if you can't afford the button. I then spent some time playing around with Photoshop and got the final UI layout down. To be honest, it's probably time for me to move on from UI seeing as that may or may not have taken 5 hours. I started to work on the actual mining functionality, firstly by modelling a pickaxe in Blender. Seeing as I wanted most of the things in this game to be physics based, I made a script for the pickaxe that would oscillate it between two rotations by adding a torque. I felt that I could improve this greatly though with a juicy manual animation, so I switched over to that approach instead. Next, I wanted to improve the polish even more, so I added some spark particles and sound effects. The next thing I did to the pickaxe was add a screen shake that is amplified the closer you get. Obviously, we don't want the pickaxe to be automatic, so I added the manual functionality so you can now click a button and the pickaxe will perform its animation. I didn't like the button being on the UI panel though, so I switched it over to hover above the pickaxe, which in my opinion looks so much better. Finally, I added the upgrade functionality to the pickaxe, which just makes it mine faster. I think I've spent enough time on the pickaxe, so it's time to move on to the furnace. I started off by modelling the furnace in Blender, which turned out to actually be one of my better models. I brought it into Unity and added some materials as well as a glow on the input and output. 
To ensure the user is aware of how much iron is in the furnace, I added a stock counter above that rotates towards the camera and some post-processing. Finally, I added the furnace functionality so that it can convert iron ore into iron bars. Obviously the furnace needs to be scalable, so I added upgrades to it to allow it to smelt quicker, and with that the furnace was complete. Before starting work on the forge, I updated the conveyor belts to be run off spinning logs because, to be honest, I was a little fed up with the plain white block. I then gave it an upgrade which makes it spin faster, and that felt like enough to make it fit in with its environment better. I got to work modelling the basic forge model in Blender before adding it into the game with its very own stock counter. The forge's job is to basically convert iron ingots into items that you can sell for money. I modelled three of these items, the cannonball, the sword and the wheel, and then encountered whatever this thing is. Finally, the forge was complete. Even though the game is essentially done, it didn't seem to look very good, so I spent some time creating a smoke VFX for the furnace, as well as adding sparks which the furnace spits out every time it makes an iron ingot. As the 24 hours was coming to an end, I decided to spend the final hour making things look nice. I modelled a catapult and animated it, then I downloaded some grass from the asset store, modelled some details and fleshed out the environment. Justin also made a song for the game that is playing now, you can check out his channel in the description. And that marks the end of the 24 hours. I'd just like to thank everyone for the recent growth on the channel, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers while I'm writing this, which is mind blowing. Now if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that usually when I make a game, it's under a time limit or some weird constraint. And it's only recently that I've realised I've actually never made a game without it being under a constraint. Like, never. So with that, I want to take some time to just make games. There will obviously be videos on these games and they'll actually be more frequent, but the challenge format is going to take a secondary spot on this channel, at least for the time being. So thanks so much for the support recently, be sure to download Core for free at the link in the description, and I'll see you next time.